Hi, everyone. Welcome to our fifth episode in our series on the 10 most commonly missed concepts on the MCAT. Today's topic is the bicarbonate buffer system, which tends to trip a lot of people up. Um, if you're interested in seeing the content related to this topic or the nine other most commonly missed concepts, you can head over to MCATSelfPrep.com, home of the free MCAT prep course, uh, to check it out there. My name is Ellery Schlingman, one of the tutors at MCAT Self Prep, and I'm going to be walking you through today's topic. Let's get into it. Where do we see this buffer system come up? Um, it's often when we are talking about buffers, obviously, acids and bases, and Le Chatrier's principle. I never pronounced that correctly, so please forgive me. I'll try to limit my use. Before we get into the buffer system itself, we really need to talk about how oxygen and carbon dioxide are transported in the blood, because that is really the basis for this system and kind of what the WMC is wanting you to know prior to the nuances of this system. So for oxygen, there are mainly two methods that are used by our body. It is either bound to hemoglobin, which we all know very well, and that makes up about 97% of the blood that is transported, excuse me, of the oxygen that is transported in our blood is going to be bound to hemoglobin. Um, the other 3% is going to be dissolved in the plasma, right? So that's kind of the breakdown of how oxygen is transported, but the story is a little bit different for carbon dioxide. Instead of two methods for carbon dioxide, we actually have three. So it is also, though some people don't necessarily know this at first, bound to hemoglobin. Um, here, only 20% of the carbon dioxide in our blood is going to be found in that form. Um, CO2HB is kind of how we write it out. The second possibility is that our CO2 is just dissolved into the plasma. And that makes about, about 10% of the carbon dioxide in the blood. And lastly, the majority of our carbon dioxide is actually converted into bicarbonate and then dissolved into the plasma and transported that way. And this is where we are talking about our bicarbonate buffer system. Let's kind of zoom in here um, and really get a sense of what is going on. So our bicarbonate buffer system reaction is when carbon dioxide reacts with water um, and is catalyzed by an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid. And from there, um, that carbonic acid is oftentimes converted into bicarbonate and a hydrogen ion. So I'm going to leave that up there for a moment um, and kind of give you a sense of what that reaction looks like, this memorization is going to be super important. When we're talking about um, how we get carbon dioxide into and out of this kind of buffer system, we want to think about in our muscles, that is what's being produced, right? Through the process of cellular respiration, um, we produce carbon dioxide. And so that is what is present in our muscles and what we want to get rid of as it gets transported into the blood. And of course, in the lungs, it gets converted back. So we kind of have this like shifting back and forth of in the muscles, it's carbon dioxide. It gets dissolved um, in the plasma, mostly in this bicarbonate form. And then at the lungs, at the alveoli, it's converted back into CO2 so that it can be exhaled. So it's kind of this back and forth that you can kind of think about. If you um, are on YouTube with us, this is where I leave you. If you are interested in seeing the rest of this video or in checking out the other videos related to the nine um, other most commonly missed concepts as well as lenses and mirrors, I highly recommend that you check them out on mcatselfprep.com. But if not, um, I wish you very well with your day and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.